Okay, we're going to look how we can use elimination reactions with alcohols, not just alkyl halides. So if I take the same kind of compound, um, 2-butanol, don't worry about chirality here, the chirality is going to go away, and treat that with a little bit of H3O+. Usually your textbook will probably write this as H2SO4 concentrated or H2SO4 aqueous. We're going to keep, it has to be concentrated and usually you have to heat this. So in my class I usually, to give a signal to my students, I say heat because um, we're going to drive off the water. We're going to eliminate water here. So, so that little um, triangle means heat. And I use H3O plus because I like to use it in my mechanisms. When you're doing a mechanism with H2SO4, it's the H3O plus that does the reacting. So we're going to eliminate the OH and the H next door. These reactions are commonly called beta elimination because the H elimination, nation, the H that is lost is next door. This is the alpha site and this is the beta site. So it's the next door H. So now we're going to lose that H, not this one because we follow Zaitsev's rule again um, for forming of alkenes and we will make 2-butene and water. Now if you look at this reaction, it's exactly the opposite of the addition reaction we did before. This is a reversible reaction. So if we added H2O to an alkene with H3O plus as a catalyst, we would make um, 2-butanol. So now, when we run this mechanism, we're going to look at the mechanism and talk about how you can control going this direction or this direction. But let's run the mechanism first. The one problem is OH is not a very good leaving group. It's not a good leaving group because OH minus is basic. And by being basic, it means it's reactive. So this is not a very good leaving group. And so we have to convert it into a good leaving group. And that's what the process of having this catalyst does. So if I take this, I'm going to draw out my hydronium. And remember when you draw mechanisms, you're always going from the electron donor to the electron acceptor, from the base to the acid. So these two electrons will flow this direction and we break that bond right there. Now we formed water in the process and we make this protonated alcohol right here. Now, at this point, now I have a good leaving group. I have water as my leaving group, very stable. Now, I could do an E2 mechanism or an E1 mechanism. An E2 mechanism, if you remember, happens all at once. I'm going to draw this as an E1 mechanism. This will happen because we're in a protonated solvent and carbocations are stabilized by protonated solvents. So when I run this reaction, I'm going to lose my leaving group first. Now what makes it an E1 mechanism is that this is the rate determining step the RDS and the one means unimolecular which is saying that there's only one reactant involved in the rate determining step. So now once that reactant happens we make our secondary carbocation. You have to pull the H next door and we're going to pull it over on this side because we're going to follow Zaitsev's rule. Now remember with the catalyst we have to reform the catalyst. So I will have my water which is a base. It's not as strong a base as the OH- minus from the previous podcast. So this will come in, pick up that proton and form the double bond there. So how is it that you can make a reaction go one way or another? Well, if you recall, when we have an equilibrium, you can use Le Chatelier's principle. So if we look at this, and I'm just going to simplify it with all the out the mechanism. I'm going to look at this. Here's our catalyst, H3O+. 
and then we're going to form our alkene plus water in our elimination reaction. And it, we're going to heat it up. So in order for it to go this direction, what you want to do is you want to drive off water by heating it up. And so this catalyst here, to go this direction, you're going to use just a little bit trace of concentrated H2SO4. So you minimize the amount of water, and then the reaction will go this direction. If we want the reaction to go this direction, then what we're going to do is we're going to add water. And so if you add water, just like with Le Chatelier's principle, you add water, it's going to shift it toward the left. So if you keep an abundance of water, you're going to make the alcohol. If you take away water, it's going to make the alkene. Now one thing you do have to worry about with these reactions is uh, carbocation rearrangements. So if I take this reactant right here and uh, 1, 1, or 2, 2 dimethyl cyclohexanol. And I'm going to treat it with H3O plus and heat. If you think about it, you can't lose a proton from this side over here. So you would predict that you would form this alkene here. But that's not the case. This reactant, this reaction doesn't form in high quantities. What you end up getting is you get an alkene that looks, or an uh, alkene that looks like this, plus water. Now, it's really interesting to go through and understand what happened in this mechanism, because that's what mechanisms can do for us, can explain why things happen. So let's run through this mechanism again. We're going to make that into a good leaving group with our H3O plus, and I'm going to make my mechanism go here because I don't have as much space as I'd like to. So again, you always draw, make that into a good leaving group. Here is our double pointed arrows because as we know, this is an equilibrium. I have my two methyl groups here. Now, what do leaving groups do? Well, leaving groups leave. And how do we make them leave? We show the electrons moving toward the leaving group. Now, what we have here is a secondary carbocation. Now, the way to show a methyl sh shift is you draw an, a circle, or at least I draw a circle, right around this methyl, and it shifts it over. And this methyl group in the transition state is actually shared between these two carbons. When the methyl shift happens, I'll draw a prettier um, cyclohexane, what you've got is you've just moved your carbocation to a tertiary position, which is more stable. Now, if we look, we need to lose a proton next door. Now we're going to follow Zaitsev's rule. If you lose a proton next door, here it won't be as substituted. So you will lose the proton here, and I'm going to draw that out. And so the water comes in and picks up that proton in the beta position, and these electrons flow here, and that is the production of the major product via a carbocation rearrangement, which yields a more stable carbocation rearrangement.